For so many years, a truck that had anything less than a full restoration or full custom paint just wasn't respected. And it makes you think, uh, why are trucks with uh, rusted bodies all the rage these days? Well, hello, all my friends. Uh, Kevin here, and thanks for watching this video in our bottom line series, where we focus on everything about uh, custom lowered trucks. For this video, I wanted to talk about vehicle paint and the overwhelming presence of uh, finished vehicles that have uh, rusty exteriors. Uh, I'm here at my uh, buddy Paul's uh, shop, uh, Old Anvil Speed Shop, and the team here sees all sorts of vehicles with all sorts of surfaces, uh, painted, rusty, patina, all of that. And as you can see behind me, there's a 74 F-150 that just got back from paint. And then we've got the boss man, Paul's truck here, uh, 66 C10, which has a uh, faded paint on it. If you are new to the truck or classic vehicle scene, you might be wondering why there are so many painted vehicles and why there's also so many uh, rusted vehicles out there. And you also might be wondering why these rusted vehicles have been accepted in the scene. Well, we'll get to all of this, but first I wanted to talk about uh, classic truck paint. Uh, as not all paint jobs are the same, there's so many different levels of it, uh, so many different styles and intensity. But one thing I can tell you that uh, makes a really good paint job stick out from the rest is uh, having a good foundation to start with uh, and doing your prep work. If you don't have a good base to build uh, or put paint on top of, uh, then you could just basically have a vehicle that has shiny paint and when you get up close, uh, it's all wavy, which isn't really good. Now, I don't know how all of you feel about this, but it's definitely a big pet peeve for me. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a truck from far away and uh, thought it was interesting, but then I walked up close and all that bad bodywork showed its ugly face. I'm definitely not a fan of trucks that are uh, uh, good from far and far from good. Is it a big deal or is it just me? Let me know in the comment section. I know for a lot of people the goal is to have a truck body so uh, smooth and clean that uh, you can see your reflection in the side of an old truck restoration. And I think the thinking here is that your truck looks so good, you gotta look your finest uh, at all moments uh, by checking yourself in uh, the reflection of your vehicle. And to be honest, that's not such a bad plan because uh, I've definitely been caught up in that situation many times. Anyways, if you want a straight paint job that gleams, uh, you're gonna need to start with a good foundation uh, in order to build off of. I know for a lot of old um, pickup trucks, uh, there's usually a lot of damage or rust that comes along with age and abuse. So um, this has to be fixed and addressed early on. And you have to do it by either um, you know, pounding on these panels just to get them straight, uh, doing a lot of uh, hard work on them, putting some elbow grease in them, or even just replacing panels, which takes a lot of skill as well because uh, you'll need to weld these panels on and you also need to be careful with your heat because if you heat them up too much, then they can warp. I've seen a lot of paint jobs go bad because of uh, contaminants underneath the paint. And the number one reason for this is rust. If you don't remove it, your paint job will bubble, crack, and eventually flake off with time. And in fact, uh, some of the high-end painters will only spray on top of a vehicle they know has been sandblasted and taken down to bare metal so they can uh, put their guarantee on it and make sure that the paint job will uh, stand the test of time. Once you have your sheet metal in order, you need to lay down a layer of uh, body filler or mud as we call it. And um, I don't care how good you are at your metal work, you got to have at least a thin layer of body filler just for best results. And if you guys think I'm wrong, hey, send me straight in the comment section below. But anyways, this process is um, very tedious and messy as the dried filler needs to be sanded down. And once that happens, it creates a, a little bit of a dust that gets airborne, and it just creates a mess wherever you're doing your work. After getting all your ducks in a row with the uh, prep work, uh, it's time to uh, lay down your primer and then your paint, which is not an easy task in itself. And I've seen a lot of people that have made uh, makeshift booths in the garages or whatnot, but I can tell you from experience that uh, having a professional booth is the best way to get top-notch results. So let's talk about cost. Uh, obviously, all the time and materials used to prep your truck's body are all attached to uh, truck paint costs, but uh, one of the biggest expenses is the paint itself. And it's not like going down to Home Depot and spending a few hundred bucks on some cans. Uh, good materials for old truck paint uh, actually cost thousands of dollars just for the materials alone. And I've only scratched the surface here. I haven't even talked about adding graphics, fades, or pinstriping at all. And all these things can add up really quick. Uh, so having a quality paint job when you tally all these things up can cost you a pretty penny. 
Uh, and let's not forget the time that it takes. Uh, it, it's so long that sometimes people, um, when they have their trucks at paint and body, uh, they consider it paint prison because uh, it could take so long. And I'm, what I'm talking about is like, it could take months or even years, and I'm not exaggerating. Then when you get through the entire process, there's even more work to be done with uh, constant care afterwards. To keep your vehicle's uh, paint nice and shiny, you're gonna have to keep it clean and also uh, wax it every few months. And if you don't add this layer of protection every once in a while, then uh, your paint could fade and even deteriorate with time. And we all know that uh, paint is really sensitive to uh, damage and scratches. Uh, and you know, having a fully done vehicle with paint, uh, running errands, eek! I don't know, man. Uh, that, that's a lot to ask. You know, parking lots are our area for high risk, um, you know, where you can get door dinks and other damage. Uh, and just because you care for your vehicle doesn't mean that uh, other people do. I mean, I've seen vehicles in parking lots just get dinged by people that just don't care. They just don't have the respect that we do. With all these things working against uh, vehicles that have full paint, it's no wonder that people look the other way uh, with trucks that uh, have rust on them. And believe me, I know all of this as uh, I had a truck that had body mods and full paint and uh, it was such a pain to uh, keep it clean and to make sure it didn't get damaged by other people. And since it was so fragile, I just didn't take it out so much and uh, didn't really uh, get to enjoy it and sold it off because I figured somebody else might enjoy it better than I did. Now let's talk about rusted versus um, uh, painted trucks as it's become such a big deal. And uh, I believe that there wasn't any one particular truck build uh, that kicked everything off. But I can tell you that in the early 2000s, um, some hot rodders started picking up some older vehicles and created um, rolling pieces of art because that's all they could do uh, to salvage these vehicles. They, could, they knew they couldn't create anything high, uh, of a higher level than that. Um, so yeah, and these things are uh, now called, are referred to as rat rods. Um, and if I got any of this wrong, just uh, correct me in the comment section below. For so many years, a truck that had anything less than a full restoration or full custom paint just wasn't respected. And it makes you think, uh, why are trucks with uh, rusted bodies all the rage these days? I think people started getting used to the look of these uh, rusty old hot rod trucks. And uh, when they came across uh, old truck finds, uh, they had the, the same resourceful uh, views on them uh, and figured they could make uh, what we call shop trucks, uh, which is where you take these old rusty trucks, you add a few modern parts to them, maybe a new engine to make it go fast, and you just use them. And you don't care about the damage you, you, you do to it along the way by uh, hauling stuff or you know, doing any other damage. Once enthusiasts started to uh, recognize and respect these retro trucks, they liked the character that came along with the uh, tastefully worn out pieces. Patina is a word that uh, best describes the aging these trucks adorn, and this does not include vehicles that have been faked. Uh, when people take a vehicle in the modern age and uh, try to make them look like they're worn out with time, uh, we call this uh, faux tina, and it's pretty much frowned upon for the most part. Basically, enthusiasts don't like it when somebody fakes it and pass it off as original. Though I have seen Fotina done uh, so well that I think it's acceptable. It doesn't happen often, but there are certain vehicles uh, that I think have done it right, uh, that have pulled it off. Um, so what do you think about Fotina? Let me know in the comment section below. This goes hand in hand with what we call uh, barn find trucks and uh, survivor trucks. And these terms describe uh, vehicles that were uh, not driven too often, uh, probably parked and then discovered decades later. And uh, these were all the rage about two decades ago. And uh, they're really, really rare these days as a lot of people have sought them out. When it comes to these type of truck finds, uh, they hold more value uh, if they're left untouched as it's the closest thing you can come to the original without a restoration. Though enthusiasts can't help it, they like to add modern features like uh, newer engines and suspension systems and wheels. Uh, so these vehicles drive like new. This is called resto modding and values increase or decrease on a case by case basis. Uh, for example, if you have a vehicle that's very rare or has some sort of historical provenance, you're gonna wanna leave it alone or untouched as it can have more value. Even if the vehicle has some damage, people like these vehicles untouched as uh, the damage actually uh, tells a part of the story of these vehicles. If you find an aged truck, I think there's a few things to consider before uh, you can make an acceptable patina build out of it. Uh, first of all, I think it needs to have a uniform look. If your truck looks like it has a hodgepodge of parts, then that just won't fly in my opinion. Uh, also, if you have enough damage where you need replacement parts uh, for old truck repairs, I would just suggest uh, looking into uh, getting a full paint job. There are also varying opinions on how to take care of a truck that has faded or rusted paint. Some people will actually buff them out to a shine, while others will uh, add a clear coat on top of them to encapsulate the patina. 
I say just leave them be and let the story continue. Though you don't want to fake aging, it is acceptable to add some door art, uh, as this is a way to add some style. And it was done to my truck, and I think it really makes it stand out from the rest. Uh, though there have been a lot of modifications uh, that I kind of second guessed during the process because there was no going back. Adding door art was just not one of them. When it comes to trucks that have uh, aged or uh, rusty truck bodies, uh, you can take them out without worrying about getting any more damage to them. Plus they look cool. Other people like to look at them. And uh, there's a lot of benefits to uh, not restoring them and not taking them to another level. But I will tell you that a truck with a clean, straight, shiny paint job, nine times out of 10, will get more attention. Well, that just about does it for our paint versus patina video. And it's time for me to sign off. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did hit that like button as it helps us create more videos in the future. If you have anything to say about this topic, uh, please drop that stuff in the comment section below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a future video and we will catch you next time. Thanks for watching Driving Line. If you guys like this video, consider subscribing to our channel so you'll never miss any of the content we create here. Whether you're into trucks, Jeeps, imports, domestic vehicles, or anything in between, we are here to fuel your passion. So hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys next time.